is this Chevy 2500 HD with the 6.6 .6 liter gas engine capable of towing big loads? Well, today we're gonna find out. Still have not downshifted, 101. Finally a downshift, 4,000 RPM. And again, we're just having a hard time getting up to speed. Welcome back to the channel. As you guys saw, we have this beautiful 2022 um, Chevy 2500 HD with the 6.6 .6 liter gas engine, also known as the L8 TV8 from Chevy. Um, and we are gonna be seeing how this thing handles my 14,000 pound trailer setup up and down the highway. We will also be comparing this engine directly to the 7.3 liter Godzilla engine in the F250s. I towed the exact same 14,000 pound trailer setup with the 7.3 liter Godzilla engine a couple months ago as well as towing the exact same 200 kilometer loop. So that's gonna give us a really, really good comparison between these two engines when it comes to things like acceleration, engine braking, fuel economy, how this thing pulls hills, and just generally how I feel the truck handles up and down the highway. Um, we also have the exact same load location on the trailer, giving us the exact same tongue weight, roughly 1400 pounds. So we'll measure our squat in just a second. This 6.6 .6 liter gas engine is packing a somewhat underwhelming 401 horsepower as well as 464 pound-feet of torque. However, if we look at the 7.3, it is only packing 430 horsepower and 475 foot-pounds of torque. So they are well within the same ballpark of each other. Now, the key with these big displacement gas engines is the workload or duty cycle these things can take. Now, looking at the 1500 segment, there are a number of engines that are putting out more power than these HD big gas displacement engines. But these engines are built and designed and somewhat detuned um, to be just abused, put away wet and keep on running day in, day out. And that's probably why we don't see those bigger power numbers you would expect out of such a big displacement V8. The max towing for the 6.6 .6 liter gas engine in the Chevy 2500 platform is 14,500 pounds. And for the first time on this channel, we actually have a truck sitting behind me that actually has that max figure. So with our 14,000 pound trailer setup, we are gonna be giving this truck and engine a really, really good run for its money. This Chevy 2500 has a payload just a hair under 3,000 pounds. And we'll measure our squat here. So about 38 and three quarters, that is bang on just about two inches. And the 7.3 liter F250 also squatted two inches. So pretty par for the course in terms of squat. Well, I think it's time we throw this thing down the highway, see how it performs. I'm excited to see how it does. I've never actually towed with this engine. Um, so let's get this thing rocking and rolling. Right off the bat, I think this six-speed transmission is really gonna not help this engine. Um, she's revving pretty good, just to get up to speed. I know one of the complaints about this engine is like kind of the feeling of lack of power from the owners. Now granted, my Mac O'Toole guy said that he um, thought there was plenty of power when he drove one out west, so we're gonna find out, um, but first, is our acceleration test 60 kilometers an hour to 110 and uh, we'll see how fast this thing gets up to speed 60 kilometers an hour to the floor Fifty six hundred rpm is the red line on this bad girl and we just hit it 106 108 110, there she is. Not gonna lie to you guys, that thing felt pretty slow, but we do have 14,000 pounds behind us, um, so we have to keep that in mind as well. So we've set the cruise control to 110 kilometers an hour. It's an absolute beautiful day out here. Great day for a tow. Um, and we're just gonna let this truck and this engine do its thing in tow haul mode and uh, we'll see how it performs, obviously comparing it to the 7.3 Godzilla engine throughout our towing loop here. Now, there are a couple of really important details between these two trucks um, that I figured I'd go over 
um, before we get too far into our towing loop here. Now, when it comes to towing, driveline is a very important factor, sometimes even more important than the engine itself. Now, this truck, this Chevy 2500, comes with the six-speed transmission, as well as 373 gears back here. And unfortunately, that is the only option of gears you have, which is a little underwhelming in terms of driveline for this truck. Thankfully, in 2024, GM is going to be dropping the 6.6 engine with 10-speed Allison, which I think is gonna make a huge difference in terms of performance with this engine. Now, on the flip side, the 7.3 is gonna come with a 10-speed transmission and 373 gear options or 430 gear options, which is gonna make a big, big difference when it comes to towing. Now, the truck I towed with had 373 gears, so that is gonna make for a very nice comparison between these trucks, both with 373 gears. Um, but that difference in driveline for the 7.3 is going to give it a bit of an advantage, if not a large advantage over this truck. Now, speaking of drive lines, this is our first little hill here. It's a very slow, long hill with a very small incline. However, it does seem to give these trucks a little bit of a challenge. So um, the Godzilla engine, the 7.3, was revving at 2,500 RPM all the way up here. We are obviously in at 3000 RPM. Um, now, drive lines. So, my prediction for this truck on this run is that the six speed transmission is going to bog down this engine. Because right now we are in fourth gear. This truck can shift into third gear, but that's it. Um, so, we'll have one more gear available, and that's it. And after that, this engine is just going to bog itself down. Whereas, the 7.3 with that 10-speed transmission um, just has so many more gears to change from or choose from and the likelihood of that engine getting bogged down is just very minimal. Another thing that's pretty obvious right from the get-go is that this engine just does not have that same um, acceleration, that same pop as that 7.3 Godzilla engine and yes, it does have more power on paper. It is a bigger displacement engine so you should expect that but I think these engines are directly compared to one another and this engine for sure is just not um, in that same realm of acceleration as that 7.3, at least in my opinion, on my towing loop so far. Another thing people like to point out about this 6.6 .6 liter gas V8 is how thirsty it is at the fuel pumps. Surprisingly, we are at 27 liters per 100 kilometers, which is much better than the 7.3. Um, the 7.3 was at like 31.6 liters per 100 kilometers. Um, so there is a fair bit of difference in terms of fuel economy. Transmission temp, 72 degrees Celsius. I'll put the Fahrenheit up on the screen there, but uh, that is ice cold. That thing hasn't budged. Plenty of cooling on the transmission. No sweat so far. We'll double check that transmission temperature on the way back because again, we got all those big hills and uh, we'll see if that transmission temp raises at all. I highly doubt it, but we'll see. And uh, you know, shockingly enough, people at the beginning of the run here, I said people said that this thing didn't really pull that well, there was no power. Um, I mean, I'm really not feeling that. Obviously the 7.3, like I mentioned, does feel like it just has a little bit more pull behind it, but this thing seems to pull just fine um, and there does seem to be a little bit of a punch behind this this massive v8 one thing i've noticed is that this truck for whatever reason lets the speed drift like it drifted down to 101 kilometers an hour before it actually downshifted um, i don't like that i'll show you guys when we get onto another hill here because it just almost bogs down 10 kilometers before it'll downshift and then it won't even downshift to its full capacity to bring that speed back up. We are coming up to a big valley here. We're gonna see how this thing um, decelerates, how the engine braking performs on this, uh, on this truck here. We got our cruise control set at 110 obviously, 113, 114, 115. First downshift, second downshift, woo! 4,500 RPM, 116. It does seem to be holding us. 
Now, the 7.3 Godzilla actually held us at right around 110. It did a really good job. This truck does seem to be holding us okay. 115, you'd like to that you'd like for that to bring us closer to 110. But I haven't had to touch the brake yet, which is a good sign. 114. So it is it is bringing us back to where we want to go. The 73 definitely was a better engine braking engine. But uh, this 66 is doing the job. It is not bad. Again, haven't had to touch the brake yet, and I definitely will not have to touch the brake. Not bad, not bad. We can see the 73 does a much better job of engine braking on this hill. Like 4,800 RPM, 4,700 RPM. Definitely a little more eventful than the uh, the diesel. That's for sure. Holy smokes, good for her. Good for the Godzilla. Just letting her rev. That 7.3 did slow that trailer down much better in my opinion. Um, actually here, so we're at 105 kilometers an hour going up a hill and this engine should downshift, sorry, this transmission should downshift to about 4,400 RPM and it's not. It's just keeping us at 105, 106 now. Um, you know, it's, I don't understand why it doesn't want to downshift again um, to bring us back up to speed. Again, here's some downshifting or, or engine braking and you know, we're 118 kilometers an hour and we're at 4,500 RPM and we're still really not bringing the speed down until we level it out. Um, that 7.3, it held us steady at 110 kilometers an hour which this engine, this transmission, this drive line just does not seem to be able to do very well. This engine was built and is meant to be worked and we can see GM beefing this thing up. Um, this thing has a cast iron deep skirted block, forge connecting rods, forge crankshaft. It's got six bolt mains. So some really, really strong bottom end strength in this engine, which is exactly what you want to see out of a workhorse like this, um, as well as just the simplicity around this engine. GM went back to the drawing board with a very traditional style, tried and true V8, very similar to what Ford did with the 7.3, um, which again, I really like that as well. This is a pushrod V8, two valves per cylinder, um, just a very tried and true, simple V8 um, with a very large displacement, putting out some good power, but also very strong. And hopefully with that simplicity, giving you guys a lot of reliability and longevity. An interesting fact about this 6.6 is that it actually shares the same bore dimensions as the 6.2 liter uh, V8 in the Chevy 1500 lineup. And what GM simply did is they just extended the stroke of this engine to give it that extra displacement. A long stroke is very, very advantageous for torque generation and making torque very down low in the RPM band, which is you know, exactly what you want out of a workhorse engine like that is just to be able to get good torque, solid torque, usable torque, um, really down low in the RPM band. And that is what a long stroke will do. Lastly, what I really like about this engine and more importantly in terms of reliability is that GM did not implement active fuel management or dynamic fuel management into this engine. Um, AFM or DFM for short is GM's cylinder deactivation technology that is causing massive lifter failures. It's wreaking havoc on the 5.3 as well as the 6.2 V8 in the, uh, the Chevy 1500 lineups. And thankfully it is not in these engines. So that is just something you don't have to worry about. And hopefully um, we'll just give this engine a lot more reliability. Give her the beans. <laughs> that six speed transmission just doesn't really have the punch like that 10 speed had in that uh, 7.3 off the line. Well, so far, so good. Um, this truck and engine seems to be pulling this load pretty well. You guys heard me complain about the dropping of speed before downshifting. We'll monitor that. Transmission temp, ice cold. We'll see what happens on these bigger hills if this 6.6 really starts to fall off in comparison to that 7.3. All right, here comes another acceleration test. Get back to 60 kilometers an hour to the floor and this one is a little bit uphill so she's gonna struggle just that much more
5,600 RPM, red line, 100 kilometers an hour, 110, there it is. Set our cruise. You are not gonna win any races with, uh, with this 6.6 .6 liter engine. Um, but what this engine is meant and built and designed to do is to just be a workhorse. Now, as promised, the backstretch is full of hills, and this is the first one. Not the craziest hill, but it's a good little pull. Um, so we're dropping 107, 106, 105, 104, 103, 102, and this engine just does not want to shift. There we go, finally, 4,000 RPM. And it is not able to maintain 110 kilometers an hour. 105, 108, 110. Another little pull here, 103 kilometers an hour, 102, still have not downshifted, 101, finally a downshift, 4,000 RPM. And again, we're just having a hard time getting up to speed. This thing is just bogged down, slowly building to 110 on that absolute minor grade. That was not even that big of a hill. If anything, if that even was a hill. Um, so we're really starting to see some separation here between the 7.3 and the 6.6. We are approaching the biggest hill on the course. We'll see what this engine's all about. Cruise control set at 110. We are in tow haul mode. We're just gonna let this truck do its thing and see what comes about from it. So again, 117 kilometers an hour. This engine just not doing the best at slowing us down. We're not necessarily gaining speed anymore, but we're nowhere near 110 kilometers an hour. Um, so that is what it is. What I'm intrigued in is to see what happens going up this hill right here. All right, we got a clear runway it seems like. Let's see, 107, 106, 105, 104, 103, 102, 101. Still no downshift, there we go. 4,000 RPM, 100 kilometers an hour, 102. It's gonna be a long time till we reach our 110 kilometer an hour cruising speed here. 107. 108. There we go. 110 kilometers an hour. We can see the 7.3 pulls with more authority up this pretty large grade here. 2,500 RPM. Six gear. 3200 rpm 106k still dropping speed fifth gear 4000 rpm finally picking up some speed oh yeah she's gonna sit right there 4000 rpm all the way up let's go now quickly we might as well check our transmission temp 40 or sorry 79 degrees celsius again absolutely ice cold on the transmission side of things no issue there Overall, it is pretty clear the 7.3 is just a much better towing unit, um, especially on a hill like that. It kind of really um, shows which engine, which transmission, which truck is the better towing unit. Okay, so we got a little hill coming up here. And like I said, I am just going to manually put my, my boot right through the firewall here and uh, see if that does anything. So we're at 110 kilometers an hour right now. As soon as we start dropping, I'm just gonna mat this thing. All right, 109, we'll wait. 108 to the floor. Oh yeah. Once we put our foot down and we get up to 40, 4100 RPM, there's tons of power there. So I bumped the speed up a little bit. 
to 114. I just want to see the single downshift sooner. We're still losing speed like crazy. You know, until I put my foot into it right there, now she downshifts and we're actually back to gaining some speed. Very interesting. Well, we're coming to the end of our 200 kilometer towing loop. And well, first of all, kind of impressive actually is the fuel economy on this engine, 25.6 liters per 100 kilometers. I truly thought this thing was gonna be an absolute pig on fuel. I thought it was gonna be worse than the 7.3, so that's a nice surprise. But more importantly, towing performance. Um, I think you guys kind of know where I'm going with this, directly in comparison to the 7.3. Personally, I just think the 7.3 was a better towing engine on my towing loop. And we'll talk more about that in my conclusion once we get back to the shop. Well, we're back at the shop and it's time for a little conclusion um, on this 6.6 .6 liter gas V8 engine. It's pretty obvious that the 7.3, at least on my towing course, um, was a better towing engine in a number of categories acceleration, um, pulling those hills as you guys saw. Engine braking was a huge one. This 6.6 .6 liter was a little bit of a letdown when it came to engine braking compared to that 7.3 that was much, much better in that category. Um, and just in general feel, there was just that 7.3 just had more power, more pop, and um, than this 6.6 this .6 liter. I guess it's not to say that the 6.6 .6 is a bad engine because it is not. Um, I like what GM has done here. Um, they've built a very strong, traditional, somewhat detuned, just big V8 um, that's going to serve a lot of people really, really well when it comes to an engine that can just work. I was a little frustrated with how this engine, this transmission would um, not downshift when we, were, when we were trying to cruise at a certain speed and it would just drop your speed and then force the engine to kind of work its way back up already on that grade instead of just you know, dropping gears, trying to maintain that speed as best as possible. That didn't happen in the 7.3. The 7.3 was a much more seamless hill pulling truck, if you will. Um, it was able to keep its speed much, much better than this truck. But most importantly, where the rubber meets the road, where money starts exchanging hands. If it were my money um, between these two trucks, the 7.3 and the 6.6 and the 2500 platform, I would be buying the 7.3 if I'm being completely honest. And with that guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. And if you like cool stuff like this, um, don't forget to subscribe because well, we got lots of trucks to review um, and uh, hopefully some cool stuff down the road. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you on the next freaking video.